generally dry day on Wednesday. But... Approach this yet. It seems like on mass, we've all defaulted to we need presence. That presence needs to be video and there still needs to be, you know, someone, you know, disseminating knowledge in the traditional way so that we can say that the charade is going on as expected. And I, I really appreciated that. The other thing I really appreciated, and I will let you talk, I promise, is the idea that, you know, you've designed your courses and design is a really important word here because a lot of your courses are really tightly designed but you've designed them with the idea of making the student or allowing the student i don't even know allowing like hoping or engaging the student to bring their own personal interest to the topic and really centering it around the student and the student's interests so that their exploration during your course is actually centered around their interests and hence something they can communicate to the rest of the class and in some ways take some you know personal interest and expertise teaching other people and i am intrigued by that because that is something that i think maybe through some osmosis of just being on the web is kind of how ds106 took shape is that notion of kind of empowering the student to bring their interests and their knowledge to the fore through their blog, et cetera. So can you talk a little bit about how you design that? Right. It is it is so similar to DS106. Um, the, you know, I teach gen ed, right? And so the students who show up in the classes are from all the different schools and colleges, departments and majors. And that's great, right? I mean, that could be this wonderful learning opportunity for everybody in class. You know, maybe they've never even met a supply chain major or an opera major, right? So so it's this great diverse set of students in terms of their academic backgrounds, plus just natural human diversity, right? Individuality, different experiences, people from different countries speak different languages. I love that as a teacher. And as a teacher, I always got to enjoy that, right? Because you know all the students in the class, but the students don't all get to know that about each other. So one of the brilliant things about a blog space is that everybody has their own blog and they bring themselves to that blog and they put themselves in that blog so that their work is contextualized in a personal context, right? So think about it, that the, the LMS discussion board decontextualizes everything. It removes it from who you are, your space, your presence. But in a blog, your stories, your notes, your research, your, your observations and other kinds of blog posts, they all are in a space together that's you, that someone can connect with and explore if they wanna learn more about you. And then for me as a teacher, one of the most fun things, the very first post that students do just to learn how to blog and how to add images in a post, is to write about a favorite place. And some of them do it in a, in a uh, like where my home is and, and they tell about where they come from or else it's a, a trip they took or else it's something just like my favorite place is, is, is a cafe. So they respond to that prompt in all kinds of different ways. And then I come back in and I'm leaving comments on those posts. Usually I don't comment on the post, but the first post, of course, I comment on. And that's where I start trying to make connections to the course content. So places connect up so naturally with what we study in the classes, like a world mythology class. Well, you know, if someone's been to the Caribbean and they love it as a tourist, I love telling them it's like I have literally dozens of books full of folk tales from the Caribbean, you know, so would you like to learn something about the Bahamas in terms of folk tales and folklore? And then with the India class, you might think that's hard, right? That, that how would I find a way to start a student's process of connecting up with India? You know, they signed up for the class because it's an online gen ed class, right? Not because they necessarily want to know anything about the epics of ancient India, but Lo and behold, you know, there's music, there's food, there's yoga, there's mountains, there's beaches, there's India and all of its vast beauty. And so it's exciting for me to, to try to find the different ways to get the students thinking about it. Well, how, how can I connect to India? And it works great, right? Because we start that process immediately. And then I've learned something about the students. So I keep coming back to whatever new thing I learn about the students. Like, here's how that might connect up with India. Like, all my pre-med students is like, 
I have to tell you about the God of medicine in India and how he was created. And think about this or in the pandemic, Jim, you're going to love this. If you have not Googled something like, and I'm sure you haven't, because why would you Google something like uh, contagion goddess coronavirus India or something like that. And you will find all these people who are looking at manifestations of the goddess as a demon slayer and how she might be able to be invoked in order to slay the corona asura, the corona demon. And you have nurses in the ICUs in India who I just lost are doing... my afternoon to you. Oh, <laughs> these poses, these nurses in the ICU, they're doing the goddess with the multiple arms. And so they'll get like three nurses standing back to back, holding all their medical instruments, looking like a manifestation of Davy with her arms and all her weapons, but their weapons are the ICU instruments. So anyway, you know, finding stuff like that to share with the students is such a pleasure for, for me because I learn a ton of stuff, right, when I go poking around looking for what I can share. And I'm really good at navigating the internet. So if I can use those skills and, and when I send stuff back to the students, for example, I'll send them a shortened URL version of a Google search so that they can see the search terms I used and like some of the advanced search operators and stuff so they can start to learn how to better use the internet for themselves. Because I'll tell you, here we are 20 years later, my students are still being told, don't use Wikipedia. And so they'll end up at totally terrible websites because they've been told to ignore Wikipedia, which is increasingly better and better and more and more valuable, especially for the subjects I teach. Wikipedia is pretty excellent. Um, you know, so I'm still fighting that battle, but instead of fighting it in terms of saying, hey, look at me, do what I do, it's more like you were saying before, I follow the students. Well, here's where you're going. Let me add something to that, or let me give you some choices that I think you're going to enjoy and and just helping, right? You know, and and we all need help. That's how you learn, right? There's something you don't know how to do. You want to be able to do it. Well, you, you probably need help. And the internet is such a great space for people to help each other, right? I mean, I, I learned something new on the internet, like not every day, every probably 10 minutes. <laughs> nom, nom, nom.